Welcome to another season of The Big Match. And the man who's made the news today, Gordon West of Everton. He doesn't want to be considered for England's World Cup party next summer. Today in The Big Match, you can see West in action against Arsenal at Highbury. And we also get a goalkeeper's view of West's decision and England's loss from Bob Wilson of Arsenal, our guest today. And Jimmy Hill will be making intelligent use every week of slow motion equipment, bringing you much more than just the goals in detail. But now let's get back to Highbury yesterday and to the action. Arsenal finished fourth, Everton third in the first division last season, so we have an instant yardstick for the new season. But a new face in the Arsenal setup belongs to 18-year-old Charlie George. A bit of a gamble, really, putting him in the side against Everton's capabilities. But Arsenal believe in his potential. So George takes his place in an Arsenal side at number eight, a side without men like Ewer, Samuels, Storey and Court, a strong first-team pool. Everton brought with them home-loving Gordon West in goal, a flamboyant but nonetheless sound last line in defence. And indeed, this Everton defence looks to have an impressive bite about it. Le Bone at five, right two, our established England players. Kendall four, Harvey six, not far behind. A young side that'll go on getting better. So two sides who were always the pacemakers. Last season kick off a new season. Arsenal defending the goal to our left. They are the side with the white sleeves. That might be the easiest way for you to spot them. Everton defending the goal to our right in their normal blue and white stockings. And this is Husband. And it was a very difficult one for Wilson to judge in the very first moments of the game. From Jimmy Husband, number seven. Kendall to Jackson to Hurst. And again looking for Royal. And also we have another of these mix-ups in the Arsenal defence involving a goalkeeper coming out. Neil it was getting that one away. Morrissey. And now coming through to Harvey. Towards the far post, Royal going in, not away yet. Jackson flicking it back. Good save! Terry Neal under tremendous pressure there from Joe Royal, but having cleared the ball after a misunderstanding between he and Wilson. Rice making the running down the right. George to Rice. Radford right up there. Can Gould get in a shot? To finish the bar! Brilliant piece of play. First by Radford. And a magnificent shot of the turn by Bobby Gould against the Everton bar. Lebone looking a little worried, and well he might, and nothing's more serious, though, than a goal kick to Everton. Here's West. Lebone away. The nearest either side have been to a goal. Morrissey. Radford again, to McNabb. And Hurst really in first time to Gould, and Gould not liking it. He's always such a difficult player to contain Gould. Certainly he misses chances, but he's going the whole time, looking for space, looking to cause trouble. McNabb. And referee Ken Burns making sure that Husband is 10 yards back. Gould going in again, flicking it this time to Robertson. George going in, but no pace. Probably looked a good deal closer than it was from Charlie George. And Robertson in the middle of a bunch of Everton players there, pushing to each other. Radford finding the bounce of the ball going his way, beating Tommy Wright. Graham trying to flick it on, but Wright well back. A very good piece of fullback play by the number two, Tommy Wright. 
a sign of the thoroughness at Arsenal. They have their home matches filmed privately so that they can dissect them afterwards. Now John Hurst. Again, they look for Royal. And again, he's under great pressure, Neil. Just over that uh, crossbar. Terry Neal has gone right into that penalty area and he's dragged Joe Royal right back with him. And it's really on occasions like that when the tactic can fail because you overcrowd the penalty area by pushing one of your own men up if one of the attackers comes back to mark him. So Neal on that goal line, Robertson with the corner, Radford going in there to flick it! Just over! Tommy Wright coming away, but that was... Good little piece of play there by Radford. Hurst. And Royal. Husband well up. Jackson and Morrissey. Went off an Arsenal defender. Went wide. Morrissey with the corner. Husband going in, flicking it on Hurst. Good save! Brilliant instinctive save by Bob Wilson. Neil again beating Royal. Neil trying to hook that one from behind Royal, having kicked Joe Royal. That really must have been a painful one. It's going to be a free kick to Everton when he's uh, on his feet again, and McClintock and Rice already beginning to line up as this wall. And McClintock are not tall, happy the way Everton are organising, or rather Arsenal are organising their way at the back. So now it's Robertson and McClintock. Royal on his feet again and waiting at that far side. Morrissey flicking it in. Hurst getting in, and it's there! John Hurst! No wonder he looks pleased, Hurst. A man... Ironically, who has done so much at the back to stop Arsenal scoring, comes through now with something just over six minutes to go to put Everton into the lead. And that's how it finished. 1-0 to Everton and a disappointing first game of the season then for Arsenal. Now, before we meet the Arsenal goalkeeper, Bob Wilson, our guest today with Jimmy Hill, let's look again at the goal that won that match at Highbury yesterday, this time from a different angle from our camera behind the goal. Here's Johnny Morrissey shaking up to take this uh, free kick for Everton. Just six minutes to go. A moment of hesitation there in the Arsenal defence. In goes Hurst and in goes the ball for the win. And now it's time to meet Bob Wilson with him, Jimmy Hill. Well, Bob, last season in a very entertaining game, you managed to beat Everton. This time in a very tight match, they took your trousers down. What was the difference? Well, we all, we, we knew full well that Everton are a good side. They contain World Cup players and class players. Uh, what we thought they lacked was uh, this little bit of bite or killer instinct if you like to call it that uh, we find that they always let us play against them but mm. yesterday suddenly they found this bite uh, our midfield players weren't being allowed to turn and the uh, forwards were having very little joy against their hard biting defence I thought Brian Labone in particular showed uh, a bite that I've never seen before in his play yeah. Would you at this stage of the season saying that Everton are better would you tip them for a championship? Well I think they're going to be a very hard side to beat, there's no doubt about it, remembering that yesterday they were without Alan Ball uh, and they had Kel Kendall off the field after about 35-40 minutes. Tell me about the pressure that's on a goalkeeper, you say it's I'm always involved, um, do you think there's a, a difference between the pressure on a goalkeeper or a forward who's supposed to score goals? Well there's no doubt whatsoever, um, it's quite amusing I've heard several stories about other goalkeepers and I know my own sort of reactions in the bath afterwards the players will be physically tired uh, I think the goalkeeper is mentally tired it's a mental nervousness which comes from the game having to be on his toes all the time appreciating that one mistake from a goalkeeper in fact can cost the game in do, you, do you think this kind of pressure has something to do with Gordon West's decision today? Um, 
I don't think so, really, no. Um, what were his reasons, then? Well, he said that it's family reasons. Well, I can appreciate that. I'm a family man. Uh, I love the time I have at home. But on the other hand, I, c I just can't appreciate the fact that uh, football is his chosen profession, of which he's got a limited time in the game. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is that uh, uh, to play for England, I'd give my right arm to play for England. And it's a highlight of his career. All right, it may be eight weeks or ten weeks, but this is a, a great achievement to play in a World Cup competition. And I think it's, um, it's very little to give up, really, uh, for the time, in fact, that we do spend at home. Do you think he'll regret this decision? I think uh, I probably when he's uh, finished with the game and so on, he possibly will. Well, thank you very much, Bob, and good luck at Leeds on Wednesday. Thanks very much, Jimmy. <laughs>Watch out here for some great goalkeeping by Everton's Andy Rankin. Your commentator there is Gerald Sinstad up at Goodison Park. The pictures come from Granada Television and Everton are in the dark strip. Wright and Hurst on the line as ball floats one over. And against the bar from Hurst, but anyway, there had been an infringement. Ball... Little's cross meant for Royal, didn't reach him. Harvey, good control and a good shot and a good save by Banks. That was good play by Colin Harvey. Johnson, right going outside him. There's Wright's cross and Royal coming to meet it on a beautiful header. And for the second time... Everton hit the woodwork and they are carrying on exactly where they left off on Tuesday night. Big debates going on in the Stoke defence about what went wrong then. Royal was left suspiciously free to aim that header. Really must be wanting to come out here with a tape measure and check these posts, I should think. Good work by Conroy. Richie ducking his head down and belting into the middle. Conroy's got over a beautiful chip. Richie and a fine save by Rankin. What a superb save. Half a second before Rankin touched that, you could have had 50 to 1 on a goal there. The goals came in the second half. Well, coming there by Newton. Royal's header back gives it straight to Bernard. Bernard gives it to LeBeau. Harvey to ball. Harvey able to turn and transfer the ball in the same movement so skillfully. Away by Bloor to Ritchie. To reach Burrows. Steals. Conroy. Burrows going out on his right and a good ball for him. This is dangerous. Johnson, Royal at the back of the box, Whittle in the middle, and Johnson wins a corner, but today he has tended to stick to the ball a little too long. Whittle, the beautiful header and a magnificent goal! What a superb goal from Ball's corner, Whittle getting up like a jack-in-the-box by the near post. Well, he deserves those congratulations. Back in the side for the first time since Boxing Day and getting his seventh goal of the season. Johnson. Royal.
Earl at the back of the penalty area. Whittle and Kendall are in there. Ball is available for the short pass. Johnson tries to beat his man and again fails. Right. Johnson, a good push back to ball. And Whittle looked as though he was being held as Kendall came in there. But I think it was Whittle who was penalised. Back not being held, but penalised for backing into his man. 25 minutes of the second half gone. Burrows taking the corner. There's the position in the goal mouth. Smith just taking up position. And Ritchie, and a fine save by Rankin. That was a real cracking header for Ritchie. Right off the meat of the forehead. The sort of header that got him a goal against Hull City last Saturday to put Stoke in the semi-finals. But today thwarted by a fine goalkeeper in Andy Rankin. Whittle gives it back to Royal. Ball is coming into the middle. Johnson is right at the back of the penalty area. And Johnson is coming for it now and nearly gets to it too. That was a well-worked move by Everton. Missing out ball. Johnson running in. And as the defence goes out, it left ball unmarked in, mid in the middle of the six-yard box. All that was lacking was the final touchback. to Newton charged down by Marsh ball giving Newton a run through on the overlap and a good cross Royal he's got it in so a victory then for Everton now yesterday lunchtime in on the wall Jimmy Hill put his top six goalkeepers in the football league in an order of merit he didn't include Andy Rankin of Everton but then he didn't know about this sort of form from Andy ducking his head down and Belting into the middle. Conroy's got over a beautiful chip. Ritchie! And a fine save by Rankin! Burrow's going out on his right and a good ball for him. This is dangerous. Smith just taking up position. And Ritchie! And a fine save by Rankin! That was a real cracking header for Ritchie. <laughs> have some more action and this time it comes from Goodison Park where Everton yesterday were at home to Newcastle remember they've just signed 150,000 pounds worth of Tony Green from Blackpool the pictures come from Granada uh, the commentator is Gerald Sinstat and Everton are the team in the dark shirts Newton Harvey, Morrissey, good cross, but headed away by Burton, helped on by Green, and now it's Everton's, McLaughlin, Royal, and his ball, not given, offside, ball given room to turn and uses the ball well so McFall has the punch Newton and McFall is on it again Henry Newton shot Hibbert against the bucket 
had a blatant foul there on Morrissey. Shirt half removed from his back. And that's going to be a booking. Ray Ellison going into the book for a deliberate foul. Only his fifth league game and his seventh appearance in the first team. Ray Ellison goes into the book. Terry Hibbett. Hurst. Burton. Green. Just slipped on that dicey top surface. And Howard, a bit too casual there, let ball in. And he's got it! There, I suppose you have one of the happiest sights of the season, really, both for Everton and for England as well. Alan Ball, so firmly back in business. Our bonus match today gives us another chance to look at the recovery of Everton this season. Yesterday they were away to Sheffield United, where the pictures come from Yorkshire Television, where the commentator is Keith Macklin. Everton here in the light shirts. I mean that towards Holmes. The flag up against. Uh, we look for offside, but the referee ignores it. Holmes. A goal in the first minute. The Lions won it flag for offside against Woodward, and the Everton players are going to appeal. Holmes, the man who scored in the first minute. But, and this may be disallowed because the referee is going across to the linesman. This could still be disallowed. Players being ordered away, a dramatic opening. The linesman had his flag up. It's offside and the goal does not stand. Ahead of the building, finding Holmes. Oh, a good cross. Headed away by Hurst. Badger. Goulding. For Holmes. And a good, quick sliding tackle by Newton. Well, a good, lively opening by Sheffield United, as indeed they opened the first half. Badger. Aiming for war boys. But that was by Goulding. A magnificent shot. Steve Goulding hitting that left foot and hitting the end. A great foot. Curry for Sheffield United. They've been doing most of the work in the opening stage of the second half. That's a good ball flicked on by Badger. Four hands. Kendall is back there. Royal seeming to jump too early, but he got the ball. Royal, a good one, went for Whittle. What a beautiful ball! And a, it's going to be there! The second attempt, McAllister did manage to stop the first one, but Whittle puts Everton in the lead. Again, the Royal Whittle move. Royal flicking it through, Whittle taking it on, and although Tom McAllister charged down the first effort, Whittle got it in on the second attempt. So Everton go into a lead. Well, it was a lead they held to win by one goal to nil.
We have some more action now, and it comes from the First Division now. Uh, yesterday, Queen's Park Rangers went to Goodison Park to meet Everton. Again, a bit of a colour clash for those of you watching in black and white, but Queen's Park Rangers are wearing the dark socks. The pictures come from Granada. The commentator's Gerald Sinstat. We take it up in the second half. Husband to Newton. First. Intercepted by Mancini. Venables. Didn't quite carry to Thomas. Darracott to Newton. Coughlin's made it, and he's being handed off by Hazel. And the referee has given the free kick. Well, they've gone to take the corner, and the corner's been given. Well, that at least was a save by the goalkeeper from Joe Royal. Venables. Venables control lets him down. Header by Gibbons, first back to his goalkeeper. Connolly. Lions. And senior away. Thomas. Dear oh dear oh dear. Darracott. Royal to Connolly. And they head up by Lyons and it's in. So youngsters off the pitch, please. Come on, off the pitch, lads. Off the pitch, please. A really superb goal. The ball comes out to Connolly, and it's a very good, hard cross he hits, and a magnificent diving header by Lyons. Parks did well to get his hands to it, but he couldn't keep it from going into the net. So it was that Everton won by one goal to nil. Our second game today comes from Goodison Park, where Everton yesterday took on Newcastle United, a game that was lit up by a magnificent goal near the end. Uh, the pictures come from Granada Television, the commentator was Gerald Sinstadt, and Everton are in the plain shirts. Four men in the Newcastle wall. Pearson walking across the front of it, joining on the end. Rolled for Dobson. Deliberately struck with a good shot. The goalkeeper won't be too pleased about that. He had his hands there and the ball spun out of them for the corner. The corner is not important, but that sign of mishandling, not good for a goalkeeper in the first three minutes of a game. 
Jones with the corner. Goalkeeper has stayed on his line and Lyons and that hit the goalkeeper and Maxwell has got it in. Mike Mahoney in absolute dejection on his line and he really must blame himself a bit for that. Jones swung the corner over, Mahoney had stayed on his line, so Lyons had a free header. The first attempt by Latchford just bounced off the goalkeeper and Latchford got it in at the second attempt. Pearson beaten by Howard, played on by Craig. Sargent turns it for Kenya. Buckley. Latchford. Pearson. Lyons making a break. Number six, good burst here. Chance for him. Deflection over the top. No, it's in. It's number two. And Nick Lyons will get the credit for that. And he will deserve it. Mahoney beaten again, but that time not to be blamed. The through ball, or the square ball in fact, played just at the right time as Lyons began his burst. He got through the tackle, saw the chance, and when he let go the shot, the deflection left Mahoney absolutely without hope. Richford, Dobson, Lyons. No pressure on the defender, just put out to Pearson. Dobson couldn't get himself in for a shot, but now Smallman gets to go with the left foot, and the goalkeeper saw it late, and Smallman thought he'd got it. Everton waited, probed patiently, and when the ball was played for Smallman, he curled it very deliberately. Mahoney suddenly woke up with a start and must have been very relieved to see it go just past. Howard, Cassidy, Natras. Goalkeeper in two minds here and he makes a brilliant save. Lawson stayed on his line and waited for Gowling to make the header and got across down fast to save well. Buckley. Smallman. Sergeant on a break outside him, but that's opened up a gap for Smallman. Oh, against the bar. Great shot from Smallman. Latchford's header and a good save by the keeper. But what a shot from David Smallman. Good running by Sargent. The defender went to cover the fullback's break. Saw, uh, Smallman saw the gap, went forward, let fly, and the bar saved Newcastle. Corner from Mahoney's save. Header away by Craig. And that whistle is going again from the crowd. So stupid. Jones. Pull back well. Header away by Bird or by Natras, I think it was. Good shot by... Oh, Clemens! has done something for Dave Clements he comes on the ball runs loose and with his left foot and I suspect his first touch of the game hammers home an unstoppable shot what a tremendous goal by Dave Clements well you can see what I mean about a magnificent goal lighting up the day at Goodison our guest today in the studio Frank Lampard the West Ham defender we should also be getting a word from Everton skipper Roger Kenyon and our old favorite Henry Cooper but first we go across to West Ham, to Upton Park, for the first division game between West Ham and Everton. And it's West Ham who are out first, and they'll be hoping to snap back on form today against a side that's also been in Europe this week, Everton, led out by Roger Kenyon, who went out of the UFA Cup to AC Milan on a controversial penalty. I wonder if there'll be any reaction from that. 
And these then are the two teams for this first division match today. And West Ham, in fact, has sprung something of a surprise. Alan Taylor, their cup final hero, is only the sub. Keith Robson gets the number seven shirt. Clyde Best comes in at nine. As for Everton, defender Mick Bernard is injured, but they have reserve strength in depth. And although they've got a reputation for being big spenders, six of this side began as Everton apprentices. Well, a good number of those players will be on trial today because about to take his seat in the stand is the England manager, Don Reevy. And you can only guess that the players who will interest him in particular. My feeling is that Frank Lampard, uh, the West Ham fullback, could well be one of them. And there have been good reports lately, too, of the Everton defender, Mick Lyons. Dobson for Pearson. Here's Latchford. Found Telfer. Now Dobson with a shot. Cannoned off Kevin Locke. Oh, and Day had to kick it away, and it was handball. <laughs> well, West Ham were in a bit of trouble there, and they were saved really when Day had to fly hack that one away off balance, and it hit Pearson, who was on the ground, on the hand. Well, they're getting good crowds here at West Ham, and that's a good vantage point for those youngsters. McDowell now with the throw. Long one. Best is there. Can Patton get in? Maybe Lampard can. No, Pearson is there first. But Lampard finds Brookie. He's all right. He's onside. A chance for Lampard. Oh, and he's hit it over. Well, what a miss that was. But at least it looked easy as the Everton defence came forward thinking they were going to catch everybody offside. The linesman kept his flag down and Lampard was free. He tried really an ambitious lob and it was too high. Some of this Everton tackling at the moment is tough to say the least. Here's Brooking. Oh, a nice little chip by him. Billy Bonds right in. Enough did Bonds miss that. He arrived late, stealthily and without Everton being aware, as Brooking, with no room at all, crossed that in so delicately, and Bonds made contact, but not quite positively enough, just wide of the far post, but a brilliant piece of improvised football by West Ham. Robson. Oh, nicely played by Robson for Brooking. Played on for Bonds. And little Buckley was there to beat big Billy Bonds. And find Martin Dobson. Gary Jones. Buckley looking for a return pass as well. Jones now taking it on for Everton. And still going on for Everton. He's uh, left McDowell behind him. And Pearson with a chance. Oh! Day was already tumbling and Pearson didn't get the right sort of touch. As Jones left McDowell and turned it in. And Pearson didn't really hit it well. And Day went down to save. So best arriving. Taylor's there. Padden will curl another corner in. Towards McDowell. Taylor again. Played wide for Brooking. Still with Brooking, this could be interesting. No! Oh, my goodness, it was a back heeler by Holland that nearly went in. And Lampard now. Curled right across the face of the goal again, but an offside flag was up. Well, that was remarkable after Brooking did so well on that byline and crossed it in. And it came to Pat Holland, and he back heeled it in. Somehow, it was scrambled away from that Everton line. Telfer. Gary Jones trying his luck on the far side now. Oh, he... Well, that was obstruction, said the referee. And that's why Gary Jones nudged uh, Graham Patton in the back. So a free kick to Everton. And of course, when a side defends for so long and is pushed back onto defence, they very often sneak out and get an a decisive goal. And that's what Gary Jones has done there! 1-0 to Everton. 
entirely against the run of the play. And Gary Jones, the man who was fouled in the first place, the free kick came over. Slack marking by the West Ham defence, Gary Jones header. Pass Mervyn Day, West Ham nil, Everton one. John Lyle, the West Ham manager, knows that there's a matter of two minutes now between his side and their unbeaten record. Brooking. Brooking again, good ball run there well by Robson, and now for McDowell! Oh, and he hit it straight! At Di Davis. While Robson won that bravely, it was flicked on there into the path of McDowell. And Davis narrowed the angle sufficiently to prevent West Ham getting a last-minute equaliser. Well, after that game, various people said various things. The West Ham team manager, John Lyle, very rational indeed, I thought, said that the defeat was acceptable because it would make his players think again. Ron Greenwood paid tribute to the skill that Everton showed in defence. And the former boxing champion, Henry Cooper, had this to say when he was asked to name the man of the match. Well, I give it to Frank Lampard, I think, because, you know, what I see him do, he done well. He was, he was like an old, I like to see an old head on, you know, young shoulders. He was, that, I could see him... Especially uh, in one half there, he was back there marshalling the old defence, getting them straightened up, you know. And then I think he laid a few good balls on in defence and in attack. He was up front as well, you know. Well, here is the man of the match uh, in Henry Cooper's book, Frank Lampard. Didn't like the bit about the old head on young shoulders, Frank, did you? Not really, no. But he's a bit too big to argue with, really. I thought so. But what, did you, what did you think of your own performance yesterday? Um, quite satisfied, really. Um, the goal, the miss, if they'd gone in, it would have... Ran it off me, really. The lob in the first half would yeah. have been uh, found yeah. for you. In fact, talking to John Lyle afterwards, I was asking how a, a defence like that could be broken down. He was talking about filling space and so on, which bamboozled me, but I'm sure not you. But he made the point about if players arrive late to various situations, they shake off their markers. And we've got a couple of examples of that uh, to show you and get your views on. And the first one, when Trevor Brooking sets up a chance for Billy Bonds, who does just what John Lyle wanted here. Trevor, in fact, turns this in, and this, I think, is what John meant about people arriving late. And you'll see Frank when he comes in, that he's shaken off those two Everton defenders. And unfortunately for West Ham, Billy Bonds didn't quite get the touch, but you see he's lost all the, yeah. all the markers yeah. there, hasn't he? And then there was this other incident right at the end. Again, Trevor Brooking making a chance. Tell us about this one for John McDowell. Uh, John was a bit unlucky. As the ball came to him, I think he just pushed it on a little bit too, too far in front of him. And but again, keeper. he's shaking everybody off. Yeah, he's in, he's in space, and the keeper just came out and narrowed the angle. He didn't done very well, actually, the keeper. There wasn't a lot John could do there, I think. Who were the Everton defenders, particularly, who impressed you most? What was it about their defence? I thought the old back four played very well, uh, in particular uh, Mick Lyons and Roger Kenyon. I think Roger Kenyon you know, was, uh, was brilliant. He can't have done himself any harm, in fact, uh, in Don Revy's eyes, I would have thought. No, without a doubt, no. no. Well, in fact, I spoke to uh, Roger Kenyon, the Everton skipper, after the game yesterday, and I asked him, first of all, uh, what pleased him most about this Everton performance. We were defended, I think, you know. Um, I don't think we really panicked. Um, we played quite controlled football. After the first half, maybe, you know, um, we panicked a little bit. But the second half, we seemed to cool down, you know, and, of course, when we scored the goal, I thought we started to play a bit of football. Mm. You've got quite a reputation now, Everton, particularly when you come to London, remembering Arsenal earlier this season, of being strong, defensive, and even negative sides as well. How do you answer that sort of criticism? Well, I answer it in the respect that um, all these criticisms we've seen, it's away from home. Nobody ever seems to watch Everton when we play at home. And when we play at home, we play some really attractive football, and teams are coming against us playing the same way as what we play when, we, when we're from home, you know, that's the only way I can answer it. The crowd were very angry at times, though, Roger, weren't they? They were well yeah. a load of rubbish and so on. I suppose that was their frustration, probably, as much as Yeah, I would think so. Um, as I say, there again, if you come to Goodison, you'll hear the same, you know, the same attitude from the crowd. What did you think of West Ham today? I thought they were a good team. Uh, I take nothing away from them. Good footballing team, very skillful. Um, uh, probably a lot of teams towards the end of the game would maybe start pumping high balls in, but give them credit, they didn't. They tried to play football and a lot of near post balls. Uh, I was very impressed with West Ham.
our next action is of the highest quality as we take you north to Goodison Park on Merseyside where Everton are at home to Stoke City, a match covered by Granada Television, the commentator Gerald Sinstadt, Everton in the plain blue shirts. Conroy battling away there. Hudson, Salmons, Pedgick. Better away by McNaught. Dobson helping it on. Marsh for Greenoff. Conroy. And over goes Conroy. And the penalty is given. Kenyon indicates a dive. But the referee didn't need to think twice about that. Conroy had pushed the ball, was going past his man, and down he went. And Terry Conroy is the man who will take the penalty. Scored from one last season. Guy Davis. what goes through a player's mind at a moment like that. A penalty given. He saw Davis go the wrong way and saw the ball just miss the upright. Third corner that Everton have had. Peter Shilton trying to get himself a sight of it. Telfer takes it. Deep and it put Shilton under pressure and he did well to punch it away. And it goes again and he saves brilliantly this time. From line. Uh, from Kenyon, rather. It was a good corner. It put Shilton under pressure to punch as men came in on him at the far post. And when the shot was banged back in by Lyons, Shilton did very well to get down. And again he does well, and this time he's got it in his hands, and the problem passes for Stoke. In the light jacket there, next to Tony Waddington, the Stoke manager, Waddington with his uh, hand on his chin. Next to him is John Tudor, the Newcastle forward, who will sign for Stoke on loan this weekend. King. Again, he bends the shot and a brilliant save! But Andy King, the player who really knows where the goal is. And down goes Shilton again! in quick succession, Peter Shilton has again saved Stoke. Andy King with the first one, just got a glimpse of goal, bent it with his right foot, and Shilton got a left hand to it, and when it came back in again, he was down again. Salmon's put in neatly there by Greenoff. Measuring the cross, but it's headed away by McNaught. Latchford, King, Lyons, Telfer, took it well, Vars is with him, Shilton is out and the goal is empty and Telfer has scored! Beautifully sprung deep from defence by Everton, two swift passes and Telfer was away chasing it with Barnes, and Shilton came off his line, and everything fell nicely for Telfer, as Bowers and Shilton seemed to confuse each other, and it was then a question of whether Telfer could hit it straight and keep his balance, and he did it very competently. Dobson now, striding past God who brings him down. Dobson put away by a good ball there. Everton coming quickly out of defence once again. Goodless is free kick driven hard and a glancing header. The second attempt is in and again it's Telfer. Peter Shilton did well to get down to the first header from Latchford, but as he beat it out, Telfer was there and stuck it home to make it 
Lyons. Very good ball for Goodless. Taking on Marsh and playing another lovely cross. Oh, what a goal! Now that's football. Everybody involved in that can take credit. Lions, a great crossfield pass. Goodless, a magnificent centre. And Latchford, a superb header. Three superlatives for three very good players combining in a magnificent move. And you can see what I mean about breathtaking action. A 3-0 win there for Everton. Oh, and Pearson put through by Greenoff. Jones is after him. Pearson chopped out. Let's go on now for some more action, and for that we go into the Midlands, where Frank McClintock is fast being made to realise what a tough business it is managing a first division club. Before yesterday's home game with Everton, uh, Frank's Leicester City side had won only one of their opening four games, during which time they'd scored only one goal. So here we are then, Leicester City against Everton at Filbert Street, the pictures from ATV, the commentators Hugh Johns, Leicester in the dark shirts. Higgins with the uh, free kick. Ticked on, and Latchford goes in, Wellington's a bit slow to come off, a chip is on now, Wellington's off his line, here's Thomas, now Latchford to drive it left footed, it's there, Bob Latchford, 14 minutes into the game, Bob Latchford puts evident 1-0 in front, that was a bit of a tragedy, the first attack wasn't built up well, but it stretched Leicester, and then when Thomas took over, nips in, a one-two, Latchford goes on, the left footer, swerved away from Wallington. Earl glides it on, Dobson is there. Out Rioch for Darakot. McKenzie. Plays it. May plays it out rather. Derek Arch. Picks up McKenzie. A flick away from Rofe. Rofe gives another throw in. McKenzie wants to take it. Derek Arch shouting at him, leave it. He helps it on, and the shot's there for Thomas, and he got it. Two nothing, Everton. So easy. Thirty-seven minutes into the first half, two nothing, Everton. The throw-in, well taken by Darakot, places it on McKenzie's head. The flick backwards, which escapes the Leicester defence, and Thomas in like a knife. Might have taken a deflection, but it's Thomas's goal. Samples. Off the wall, corner. Well, that's the first corner that Leicester have had in the, in the game. Going over to take it, uh, Alderson. Wellington running near post, brings people with him, comes back again. Now Sim starts his run. And Sims got there. And Dobson gets it half clear. Whitworth plays it. Sims bangs it in. Well, that was a surprise snapshot from, uh, from Sims. 
Okay, that's a hammer. I think it surprised Wood. He clutched it and held it. He dropped it. A couple of Leicester men were there to pounce on the mistake. May, first time ball in. Higgins gets it forward again for Everton. And uh, Worthington went through with his tackle a little bit late after the ball had gone. So it's a free kick to Everton, more or less the halfway line. A couple of minutes to go to half time. Everton most positively in the boss seat at the moment. Their away record, fairly useful. A win at Villa, a very, very close defeat at Arsenal, and then they win at Sheffield United in the League Cup. And here they're going well again, and the shot's there for Thomas. Andy King! Andy King has made it three! Andy King makes it three. Oh, and Leicester destroyed by that free kick. Hoisted in the air. And it was the fight of Mike Lyons that cut Leicester apart. When the ball dropped down, there was nobody picking up Andy King, and he blasts it in there. That's now McKenzie. Oh, it's Everton. Again, surging right side as the uh, short-tempered fuses in the crowd break loose. And Latchford blaking loose with Sims. And McKenzie drives that one beautifully. Oh, that was so quick and smart. Latchford beating Sims in the run. The cross in for McKenzie. The first time drive could have been number four. John Samuels gets that one in for Worthington. Samuels again. Wide for Whitworth as we go into stoppage time. Worthington trying to get a turn in and a good drive, hit the post! Frank Worthington did remarkably well then. Back to goal, shielded the ball, a half turn, super left foot drive, deserved better, but he hit the post. Sims, that's so easy for Rioc though. Terry Darakot. Sims and Latchford got there. And Latchford's in there again. That was a very important interception for May to make. Alderson chased by McKenzie. Alderson breaks free. Run a long way. Kemba. And Earl couldn't quite get there, and Kemba couldn't get the beef. The beef in. The ball is uh, going for a corner. It was a good run by Alderson. Came a long way. John Samuels to take the corner. May and that surely slid in finally by Sims. So it's 3-1. Sims scores only his... Uh, Second ever goal for Leicester, the big lad. The corner coming in, drops down, a half chance wasted, and then Sims picks up the pass from Smith and glides it in. They're not looking like showing too much improvement at the moment. They've, uh, they're unbeaten at home in, uh, in two games. Oh, and that one's gone through to Latchford. And he's going to get there. Oh, he let Mackenzie have it instead. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Duncan Mackenzie is magic. He didn't have to weave too many spells to knock that one in. Diabolical blunder by Leicester. Let Latchford go on and take on Wellington all by himself. And as he was sizing himself up to knock the ball in, he saw Mackenzie and said, all right, I've had one. Here's one for you. 28 minutes into the second half, and Everton re-establish a clear three goals lead. So Leicester, got it all to do all over again. Pull one goal back, 
but uh, that mountain becomes higher again for them. Smith. Roof. Whitworth helping it on. Worthington. Punch and Samuels. And Kemba miskipped with a goal at his mercy. Another throw. Wellington uh, gambled a bit on that one. Had a little bit of leg spin on it as it hit the ground. Very nearly took it by surprise. The double challenge on Worthington, not fair, so Leicester get another free kick. Dennis Rowe with the free kick. It was a bad one too. Thomas tips it down for Latchford. Whitworth bangs it into Latchford. And it'll break now for Thomas. It's a quick look in. There's an offside flag up. Not on King, I think, but on McKenzie, the further of the two Everton players at that moment. McKenzie is getting... Oh, it's King who's getting uh, the yellow yellow card. King who uh, turned round and said something unpleasant to referee Derek Richardson. So yet another man who scored a goal and marked up a booking this afternoon, Andy King. Fourth booking of the game, which uh, really hasn't had enough aggro in it to warrant four bookings. They've all been... Uh, Moments of foolishness. Mackenzie, beautiful skills against Rove. On for Jones. Substitute fullback. May losing that to Thomas. And Whitworth gets it away for Leicester. Smith. Whitworth. Alderson. Sims. Gonna drive it straight into the back of uh, David Jones. Thomas, as Rioch starts to break up, goes to McKenzie, who helps it on to Rioch. He could have himself something here. And this will be Andy King's second goal of the game. And that makes it 5-1. Oh, and that goalkeeper, Wellington. He's really... So he scored... In the first half, Andy King at 44 minutes, and now he's tucked in his second at 44 minutes. Well, that was destructive. Beautifully released pass from McKenzie, set Riot going. He races in, tries the shot, it comes out then, and Andy King had the easiest job in the world to tuck it away. And a 5-1 win there for Everton. So stand by then as we go first to West London and Queen's Park Rangers against Everton, where for one player, it was a return to familiar surroundings. A wave there from Dave Thomas, back again at Loftus Road, so often sprinting down the Rangers' wing these past five years, but the recent move to Everton now makes him one of the threats to QPR today. And in a period of change at Queen's Park Rangers, also back at Loftus Road, here's their new man, Martin Busby, former Rangers player who went to Notts County, now making his first home appearance since his return. So this, then, is how Queen's Park Rangers line up today. Full-back Dave Clement passed a morning test, but Ian Gillard is out. John Hollins goes to sub, with the number four shirt being taken by Mick Leach. Jerry Francis still out with hamstring trouble, but it's thought he will be fit next week. As for Everton, they're without midfield man Bruce Rioch, who now seems likely also to miss Scotland's game on Wednesday. His place at number six goes to Jim Pearson. Duncan McKenzie had a test on a bruised foot 35 minutes ago, but he's fit, plays at number 10. Don Masson, Stan Bowles, a little toe poke here for Shanks. And Givens just beaten to it by David Jones. Pearson playing a delightful ball there for David Thomas. Inside for Dobson. 
Now King. Beautifully weighted there for Andy King. Pearson's coming up in there. Latchford's in there too. And that's a good goal for Everton. And they've begun exactly where they left off at the start of last season when they came here and won handsomely. Andy King playing such a big part in it. There are the two men who've made it. King, who played a big part in it over on that uh, left touchline. Latchford with the header. Past Phil Parks just inside the post. Clement. Bowles letting it go very skillfully there for Easto. Bowles again. McKenzie. Stopped by Abbott. Short pass to Bowles. Masson right up there amongst the front men as well. Givens. Well, he's... Look at Wood right out there now. Has he given away the corner or a throw? No, it's a throw. And as Wood hurdles to get back, they've got that goal. Oh, good piece of play by Rangers. Good quick thinking. By Don Givens, who took that uh, throw quickly. And Masson, who'd gone up there, got the header in. But uh, unfortunately for Rangers, it wasn't uh, on target. Oh, Masson not quite controlling that one. Andy King. Sending Dave Thomas on his way now. This could be more trouble for Rangers. Latchford in the middle, and David Jones has come up as well. Latchford with the header. Oh, a beautiful goal. A second one for Latchford, and a second for Everton. And the architect is the man who so recently was a Rangers player, Dave Thomas. A great run down the left. Latchford beautifully placed for that uh, near post header. Wider Phil Parks. Gordon Lee doing a lot of shouting on that Everton bench. Well, it's been a good opening 18 minutes for him and his team. Must be the flick for Shanks. And Busby trying this time to get in behind that Everton defence. That's a good cross as well, but Pedrick's behind it. Easter with the header, straight though into the arms of Wood. Got up well at the far post there, uh, Peter Easto from Martin Busby's long, interesting cross. Easto, Bowles, Clement, high towards Don Givens, but even higher was Mark uh, Higgins. Oh, and a great goal by Peter Easto! Well, that'll put Rangers back in the game. By word, how they needed it. And it looked to be no great danger for Everton as Higgins got up so well. When it came to Easto, a lot of space for him, surprising that. Left foot hooked high into the net. And good play here by Martin Dobson. Masson after him. Here's McKenzie. Bit of space for him on the right. Got it across beautifully. Oh, and uh, Thomas on the far side. Couldn't quite finish it off. Superb piece of play, though, by McKenzie. That devastating sprint over maybe only three or four yards when it really mattered. Hard low cross. Rangers in trouble. And Thomas couldn't quite turn it in. Dobson, Pedrick. Thomas. Martin Dobson for Everton. Latchford, Masson right back there, nearly caught out. And a free kick given for handball by Abbott. The ball, in fact, kicked at him by his teammate Don Masson. And there wasn't much that uh, Abbott could do about it. He was only about a couple of yards away. But it gives Everton this free kick. Dave Thomas and Martin Dobson, the two men behind it. Three men in the Rangers' wall. Masson, Easto, and Busby, who came off and charged into Dobson, giving away another free kick. Not only attacked the ball, but attacked the man as well. Still three men, those same three men in the Rangers' wall. And still the same two Everton men behind it. Thomas chipping it now to the far side. Andy King coming in, and Latchford has got his hat-trick!
Well, Rangers, who are dab hands themselves at free kicks, badly caught out by that one as it's floated out. And Andy King on the byline, turning it in, no trouble at all there for Bob Latchford. Needham to Massa. Needham again. Oh, he's giving it away to McKenzie. Now, can McKenzie make this four for Everton? And he can, and he made it look like child's play. And the Everton men are rushing towards McKenzie. And Dave Needham is the man who knows that it's his mistake that has virtually put this game beyond the reach of Rangers now. Needham's mistake. McKenzie on it like a flash. And he kept his cool superbly as Parks came out into the back of the net. Thomas. King. Oh, a nice touch there for Pearson. Masson's right in there. And uh, a free kick to Everton. An obstruction by Masson on Andy King. A yard outside the Rangers area. And could this mean more trouble? 4-1 down already. And a committee meeting there to decide how this free kick's going to be taken. Dave Thomas saying one way, Andy King saying another. Martin Dobson standing over the ball, and Queen's Park Rangers are waiting for what's going to be hit at them. Martin Dobson. Now, will something come of this? Might well put it there for King, and he played it into the wall. Pearson, a great save! Well, Phil Parks has had to pull the ball out of the net four times this afternoon and hasn't had any opportunity to show what a fine keeper he is. Then he did, that shot by Pearson, and he was down well to push it away for the corner. So Thomas with the corner for Everton. Floated in there, and Pearson so very close indeed, having been foiled in one moment by a fine save from Phil Parks. Then got up well with the header, only to put it wide of the other post. Dobson. He's really been a cut above Rangers for most of the afternoon, except for that one little period just before half-time when it looked as though Rangers might come back at them. Dobson to King. That's a good shot! Oh, and another fine save by Phil Parks. Andy King, the former Luton lad, having a very lively game indeed and a good left-foot shot. And Phil Parks just finger-tipping it over. What a game he's had, Andy King. Made the first and third goals. And here's Dave Thomas, who made the second one. With the corner for Everton. The fists of Parks. Dobson. Uh, now Latchford, not his fourth goal, surely. Yes! And the fifth for Everton. It's a riot. Four goals for Bob Latchford. No wonder he can afford to smile like that. The other one coming from Duncan McKenzie, which in itself was a juicy one. And Everton all smiles as that ball fell for Bob Latchford. He couldn't believe his luck. And he gave Parks very little chance. Nice balls. Turning him one way, turning him the other way. Can he do it yet again? Or is he going to run into trouble? Well, he's... No, he's giving him a few problems there. And a lovely little overhead, well saved, though, by George Wood from David Needham. Well, that was a bit of vintage bowls. And in the end, that little shuffled cross and an overhead by Needham and a good piece of reflex goalkeeping by George Wood. Masson. Busby. What a good ball by Busby for Easto. Oh, and he hit the post. What a terrible piece of luck for Peter Easto. Could Bowles turn it in? Free kick. But what a ball that was by Busby. 
it gave Isto the opportunity to show his speed and his uh, shooting skill, and he whacked it against the post. Now Bowles, Masson up there with him. Givens right in there. Always just favouring the keeper, though. And Wood very quickly to come off his line at all times. Here's Masson. Back again for John Hollins. And a touch by Isto, and my word, he couldn't have come closer yet again. Stan Bowles. A penalty. That time a foul by Jones on Bowles. A yard inside the box. Not too many complaints, I think, by Everton. It looked a penalty. And Roger Kirkpatrick had no doubts that it was worth a penalty. Now Bowles and McKenzie having a slight word with each other to decide which side Stan Bowles will put it. McKenzie told him one way, and I'm not sure that I'd take Duncan's word for it. Let's see, though. Bowles versus George Wood. And a lot of encroachment. Wow, that was an amazing save by George Wood. Bowles took it. An enormous amount of encroachment on the left-hand side of the penalty area, though. But Wood down. And the penalty was saved. There's the final whistle. A fine victory for Everton. And their manager, Gordon Lee, just getting out of the tunnel. He really is getting this Everton side on the move. And nobody was more on the move, and I'm sure all Everton fans would agree, than their number nine, Bob Latchford, being mobbed on the pitch by one or two fans and now shaking hands with the referee. An astonishing day. And a black and depressing day for Queen's Park Rangers. And many of their fans uh, were still outside the ground when I left, looking a bit perplexed and asking such questions as... What on earth's gone wrong with our team and uh, some stronger things as well. Frank Sibley, Rangers young manager, agrees that his side was badly disorganised at the back yesterday and says that things can only get better when a fully fit John Hollins and Ian Gillard return uh, and Jerry Francis recovers from the hamstring injury and that's likely to be good news for Rangers next week. Well, so much for Rangers then. Uh, Everton's Gordon Lee had no need of an inquest at all. His main point was that on his day, Bob Latchford was the best centre-forward in England and that his second goal was one of the best he'd seen for years. Masson not quite controlling that one. Andy King sending Dave Thomas on his way now. This could be more trouble for Rangers. Latchford in the middle and David Jones has come up as well. Latchford with the header. Oh, a beautiful goal. But I just wonder if Mr Lee realises that Bob Latchford scored an identical goal for Everton against Stoke City last season at Goodison Park. Can you spot the difference? Very good ball for Goodless. Taking on Marsh and playing another lovely cross. Oh, what a goal! Yes, what a day it was for Bob. The only other time he'd scored four goals in a game, he told me, was when he played for England's youths a long time ago. But now we move on again to first division action uh, to catch up with two clubs who really have surprised a lot of people this season. Everton, who started the day in second place, and Coventry, who started it in third. A crowd of 43,000 at Goodison Park for this game. The pictures come from Granada Television. The commentators, Gerald Sinstadt, and Everton are in the white shorts. Thomas, again to try the touchline. This is the kind of play he loves, and Europe has hooked him down. Eight minutes into the game, and Terry Yorath severely admonished for that tackle. Feet whipping up somewhere around the knees. Thomas takes the free kick himself. Good one. Dobson's header. So Terry Yorick pays the full penalty for his foul. Thomas, the man who was brought down, plays the free kick to the near post, and Dobson gliding in on the angled header. To Wallace. Wallace, a good turn and hook across, and Wood was in some trouble with it. 
Wallace dangerous anywhere in the penalty area. Took that and turned very cleverly. And the ball into the top angle caused Wood a bit of trouble. Ardiello with the corner. Good jump by McDonald. Well saved by Wood. But the corner was beautifully placed. And McDonald soared on his own. Gordon Lee with arms folded. Cleared by Roberts. Lions, Latchford free, and it's a goal. Mike Lyons making another of his crucial interventions upfield, just slotted in there, toe-ended the ball over to Latchford, and as the Coventry defenders look to the linesman, Latchford headed in, and the flag stayed down. Pejic. Latchford there. Is that a penalty? I think the referee was unsighted. He was far side of the goal mouth from that trip. And that's a free kick. McDonald bringing down Thomas. I think that Coventry may have had a let off with the previous incident. Thomas takes the free kick and there's a goal! Latchford again! Thomas is devastating with those crosses with the dead ball. And for the second time in the game, it's paid off. Gordon Lee absolutely delighted. Steve Burtonshaw applauding his men. And that was a beautiful cross, well nodded in by Latchford. Jones with the free kick. Flick on by Lyons. Latchford has kept it in play. He has Thomas there, number 11. Thomas has got it over. They're queuing up at the back post there. And it's got in off the post. Who's going to claim that? I think Pearson. But the credit really is Thomas's. He delayed and delayed and delayed. And when he played the cross... They were all waiting on the far post and the nod went across the goal and eventually in off the post and it was Jim Pearson who raised his arms to claim the goal. Can't deny Everton their superiority but one has a certain sympathy for Coventry for their attacking intentions that you really wouldn't grudge them a goal. Donald's head, it's come to King! <laughs> you won't find a happier bench than that anywhere in the country. Gordon Lee, who lives every kick with his players, but really what a fine goal there, McDonald not quite making the header correctly and Andy King left foot on the volley, no chance for Bly. Nardiello. Good play by Nardiello. That's that left foot. It's the first time he's had a chance to use it. Tripped his way into the box with his right foot. Found the gap for the left foot shot, and Wood made a great save. Okay. 
to Nardiello. Fedjic. Dobson. Thomas. Acres of space for him. Two men to cross to. Latchford! What a glorious goal! That's the goal of a championship side. The mark of tremendous finishing and accuracy from Latchford. But a marvellous break by Thomas, given the room to go down, and yet again he sets one up with a beautiful cross, and Latchford, the finishing that surely England are looking for. 6-0 for Everton, what a win. <laughs> Everton paraded their new £300,000 signing from Derby County, Colin Todd, in their defence at right back against Wolverhampton Wanderers. The pictures come from Granada Television. Commentators Gerald Sinstat, Colin Todd and his Everton teammates, they are in the dark shirts. Right. Foot stuck out there by McCall, his parking. And McCall lets it go. Latchford. 1 0. Well, John McCall, with the experience of more than 350 league games, committed an elementary error stepped over the ball, assuming it was Bradshaw's, quite unaware that Latchford was there, and from there on, it was an easy task for the Everton centre-forward to get his first league goal of the season. Lyons. Foul by Bell. Fetchick, who was fouled, willing to take the free kick. On the quarter hour, 1 0 to Everton. Well, that was a foul, penalty. For John McCall has done it again. down Mickey Walsh with a shoulder charge off the ball and a penalty for Andy King. <laughs> 2 0 as Andy King scores his sixth goal of the season. And what a beautifully struck penalty it was. Bradshaw made up his mind and he made it up wrong. Stripping off their sub, Mel Eves. And the cross towards Bell. Got in there before Lyons. Couldn't direct the ball. Norman Bell on the end of the header, but side netting. Latchford. Magic on the touchline. Side to Thomas. 
trip by McCall. Walsh, King and Latchford poised at the back of the penalty area. Thomas to take the kick. Into the near post for Walsh. And King couldn't turn it in. Very well worked move. Thomas's free kick. Walsh's back header. And King coming in at the far post. Couldn't turn it in. Well, that's a win that puts Everton, as you can see, in second place. One point behind Liverpool, who were held 1-1 at West Bromwich Albion yesterday. Liverpool 13 points, Everton 12, Merseyside dominating the early weeks. And a defeat that leaves Wolves right at the bottom, as you can also see, with only two points. And manager Sammy Chung with more problems than most. himself plenty of options in the squad he chose for this game but in the end the only change he has made is in goal and that was forced on him Jim McDonough injured an ankle in training so Martin Hodges recalled for the first time since April he Kevin Ratcliffe and Imre Varadi are new to derby matches it's coming up to his 22nd birthday Martin Hodge push in the back referee keeps them going played the advantage O'Keefe, Ferrari going well here, left foot blocked by Sunis. First threatening move, and lovely and fluent it was too from Imre Ferrari. Now Bailey, Ross. First through by McMahon, and he'll keep it in play. Knew the space was there and used it well against the upright from Berardi. Sure that it would have counted. The referee is calling them back for something on the far side of the field. It's worth having a look at the way that was set up and how well Berardi hammered it. Ross. Berardi. He does show lovely control on the ball. Russ was really ballooned too far, but maybe Everton will make something of it. The overhead from Hartford and a clearance from Cohen. Lyons. Hartford on to Easter, who is onside and has a clear chance. Will it go in? Was it in? It is now. Mr Thomas is taking a long walk towards his linesman, gets the thumbs up, and the goal stands. Not cleared on the line by Neil, so 1-0 to Everton. 17 minutes gone, and Peter Isto gets the opening goal of the game. Going. Dalgleish. Oh, a nice turn. And the shot went through the goalkeeper's legs and out for a corner. Kenny Dalgleish can scarcely believe that he didn't score. Thompson. themselves out of a tight situation. Lee 
Chase jumping, knocking it down for McDermott. Oh, Everton just getting bodies in the way, and it still needed a desperate plunge, and now it's getting difficult. And Mr Thomas is in and sorting them out. Soon it's looking for somebody. And there is a quite unnecessary altercation there, because Hodge had got that ball, claimed it, and it really needed nobody else to go in at all. Mr Thomas has got his book out and knows exactly who he wants. Case, and I think Sunis as well. As we're now in the uh, position of having to uh, make guesses because there are no yellow cards, but I think we can reasonably assume that two players are cautioned here. Sunis and Case. The referee is also going to have Lions to talk to. Still Case, the booing won't put him off. Easto, a nice little touch, and Varane, a good stretch. Away he goes, and tried unselfishly to set it up for Easto. Now tries the shot, and brings out a save of international class from Ray Clements. Lovely bit of football from Everton in attack. And a fine save from Ray Clements. Rowdy trying to give it to Isto. Should maybe have gone on his own the first time. When it came back to him, though, made up his mind, tried the shot, and what a good save. So Ross has another corner for Everton. Outswinger, looking for Lyons, didn't find him. O'Keefe over. Tried to be too deliberate about it, but he's made the goal for Ferrari. What a very cool piece of work. Well, I thought that Ferrari had wasted that when he pulled it so far wide of Clements, allowed the goalkeeper to get back on his line, but still took his time, and in came Ferrari, and in goes the goal. in this Everton first team making and scoring the goal Eamon O'Keefe and Imre Varadi just look at the excitement there and what a vantage point they've got looks a bit precarious they're seeing the game foul given and a chance for Liverpool to take another quick free kick Sunis Cohen uh, penetrating this, Ray Kennedy turning, and Case! Now it's 2-1. And for the first time almost, Liverpool were getting the ball into the box quickly. And they've got a quarter of an hour or a bit less to see if they can do it again. Kennedy turned on that, Case was in there bustling, and Hodge couldn't keep it up. Lions, these last five minutes will seem long to him. This is his 20th Merseyside derby, and he has never been on the winning side. Maybe now Ferrari will make certain of it, but he's missed it. Tried to make certain, was forced wide, and the left foot couldn't find the net. Bursting away. Clements out, forces him wide, he's done the difficult part, he perhaps should have gone on another stride to make sure. Kennedy and Lee not allowed to get the ball because of Ross's tackle. Cohen strides out, plays it early for Kennedy, Hodges out again, and is hit by Kennedy coming through. Hodge had the ball.
Soonis. Thompson, Irwin, Soonis again. We've had a minute over the 45. Case, Bailey. If it hasn't been a game of classic open football, it's been a game we will not forget. Everton have won it by two goals to one. The Everton fans celebrate and celebrate deservedly because it has been a fine victory by their team. Goals by Isto and Berardi. Case replying for Liverpool. 2-1 the score. And I wonder what all that means to an Everton Merseysider. next game on the program today features the team at the top Ipswich Town who yesterday took themselves to Goodison Park for a game and an excellent game it was too against Everton where the pictures come from Granada Television the commentators Martin Tyler here at Ipswich in the light shirts Here's McMahon getting past Muren and then past McCall O'Keefe breaking ahead of him and staying onside Whistle has gone for a free kick to Everton. There's some pushing by McCall on Eamon O'Keefe. Everton with the aerial power of Mick Ferguson as a focal point. Thomas curls it in. Ferguson glances it in. So Mick Ferguson proves once again that he can be a thorn in Ipswich's side. The goal in the second minute from Thomas's swinging free kick. Just the touch there from Ferguson and Everton lead. Flick from Mariner. It's sat up nicely for Gates. Eric Gates, who's made a career really out of scoring spectacular goals from just that sort of range and Paul Mariner's flick here guided it down beautifully for Gates who followed the dipping shot Gates turning straight into Lyons now McBride Osman has had to go across and McBride beats him Bailey through a phase at the moment, Alan Bailey, where the goal would do him the world of good. But the advantage of Everton using an orthodox winger in Joe McBride, seen again, gets to the byline. Bailey's header. Here's O'Callaghan. Tracked by O'Keefe. Walk has darted away to the far post. As Butcher plays it here for McCall. Now O'Callaghan, they're queuing up for the cross in the middle. Which O'Callaghan provides for Gates. And now for Walk. And John Walk can't believe that the chance has gone. And Neville Southall can complain of lack of protection. 
And so Callaghan finally played it in here for Gates, who missed control. Southall then lost it himself. And Walk, with really an open goal, turned it wide. First genuine chance that Ipswich have created, and it's taken them 35 minutes. There's Trevor Ross. Using McBride as the decoy. Good skill by McMahon that brought him a shooting chance. And it was hit with real power, but straight at Paul Cooper. Steve McMahon, who scored in the first minute last week at West Ham. Paul is forward ahead of him, but this is Muren. And now Gates. Touch back by Mariner. It's beautifully set up for Eric Gates. And Gates will work it in now. And Ipswich have equalised. Arnold Muren playing it initially to Gates, who linked up with Mariner. Gates' first opportunity was here. He might have had a push at Mike Lyons to get the chance. It came back at him. And that time he couldn't miss. A little bit of a heart flutter too for the scorer. <laughs> Ross again involved at the set piece. Here's Lyons. The crowd behind the goal feeling that Lyons was pushed. Lions once more, and it'll come here for Stevens. Oh my word! In his third first team game, Gary Stevens, the 18 year old. Well, he's such a calm youngster. He really has fitted in so well when the opportunity to play in the first division has been presented to him. It came to him on his left foot and he drilled it past Cooper. Osman trying to play it forward in the direction of Mariner but not hitting his pass at all and it's let O'Keefe forward here. And McBride in acres of space and a chance here for Joe McBride in against Paul Cooper. Ferguson couldn't convert the ball as it dropped to him. And then Ross with a really intelligent trip. But dropped just over. This was the chance that presented itself to Joey McBride. Pushed out by Cooper. Ferguson couldn't collect. Butcher just prodded it away. And Ross looking up, sizing up the situation, chipping it towards Cooper. But it dropped just over the goalkeeper and over the bar. Here's McMahon. Ferguson. Now Bailey. Now Ferguson. Blocked by the legs of Cooper. Bailey again. And that came out of John Walk. What a remarkable series of events. The referee looks at the watch. And Everton celebrates their best win to date under Howard Campbell. That's as maybe, but it was a blow also for Ipswich, although their captain Mick Mills was in defiant mood. Elton Wellsby pointed out to him that their defensive record should be giving them some cause for concern. <laughs> not really, no, we're second to top in the table. I mean, that's not serious, is it? No, you know, but you, it's you, keep asking us, you keep asking us to be entertaining and score goals, and uh, we must have scored a lot more than we've conceded. We're second to top in the table. Um, you should say... Thank you very much, and pats on the back for that. Not say, hey, you've got problems. You want to get your defence sorted out. Well, from our point of view, certainly no complaints, but it's really your view I'm looking at, the view of Ipswich Town. And I'll ask the question again. I mean, do you feel that you've got problems at the back? No, I don't. No. No, no I don't. No, because we, I don't think that's a... We've played 10 matches, 13 goals. That's not a colossal amount, surely, is it? <laughs>
if it's entertainment football fans want today, they certainly got it. The main match, Everton against Spurs. A game covered by Granada Television and our commentator there, Martin Tyler. For Glenn Hoddle, an important season ahead with Bobby Robson shortly to name his first England squad. But Hoddle is still troubled by problems in both Achilles tendons and he only plays today after clearance from a specialist on Friday morning. Steve McMahon also faces a vital few months, with Everton now expecting him to turn potential into fulfilment after a relatively unproductive time last season. McMahon is a significant figure in Everton's midfield, but there's one change from the side that swamped Aston Villa on Tuesday, Alan Ainsco coming in for the injured Alan Irvin. Adrian Heath stays up front alongside Graham Sharp, both having scored twice in midweek, when much of the prompting came from Kevin Sheedy, the former Liverpool player, wearing number 11. Tottenham are able to field the side which won at Ipswich on Tuesday. Mick Hazard is the substitute, though, in place of Ricky Villa, who continues his quest for match fitness in the reserves. Hoddle. Well read by McMahon. Played long by Sheedy, changing the point of the attack in the direction of Heath. Burrows is up in support. The pass just came behind him, but Burrows might make something of it yet. And Sheedy places it in. The goal is given. Everton thought they might have had a penalty when Burrows went down, but their disappointment turned to joy because Kevin Sheedy wasn't left appealing after this incident here. Burrows falling. And it was Hoddle who made the mistake, and Sheedy capitalised. His first goal for his new club. Sharp. Lacey is the defender, wearing number four. Galvin there as well. And Sharp decided in the end to play the ball off Lacey and gamble on winning a corner. And that's the way it went for him. Everton now employ Kevin Cheedy's left foot to take corners from their right. Heath coming off the near post. Sharp waiting behind him. And King. And the goal from Billy Wright. Everton exploit the set piece. In fact, at the near post, I think it came off a Tottenham head. It was Tony Galvin, but it reached King. A nod back, a nod over the line from right. It's 2 0. Clements looks perplexed. Galvin showing strength to get away from Burrows. Arm trying to help out for Everton. It's still Galvin. Finally, deflecting off Burrows uh, through the efforts and endeavour of Tony Galvin, who's doing his best to try and lift what's been a dismal first half so far for Tottenham. And it was Miller who came in, a prod from Mabbott, and Everton got it off the line. Paul Miller coming in strongly behind Archibald. There was Mabbott. And it was John Bailey who saved the day for Everton. Ainsco now borrows. Everton rather drawn towards the man in possession, although Bailey here has checked out sensibly. This is King. Good defending there by Gary Mabbott. The early ball from right was a fine one. Bailey in goes sharp. And McMahon, it's all going the way of Everton. 3-0 after 33 minutes. The early pass from Billy Wright for Bailey, who saw Sharp in the middle. It didn't quite drop for Sharp, but it did for McMahon.
of Everton scored three times in the first half against Aston Villa on Tuesday night. I don't think they expected to match that feat here against Tottenham, but they certainly have done. Crooks. Archibald. 3-1. Perhaps the euphoria getting the better of Everton, who lost their concentration. The corner had been played short. And Archibald with the confidence to turn past Higgins and fire it in just under the bar. His second goal of the season. And it rather brings Everton back down to earth. Coming within a minute of the goal from McMahon that had put Everton momentarily three up. Right header. Nice touch from Crooks. It's Tottenham having picked up a little bit of confidence, having pulled one goal back. And King finds the free kick given against him. Just turning Garth Crooks. Four in the wall, Southall rather drawn to the middle of his goal. And the chip towards Galvin. And Tottenham could so easily have exploited Hoddle's skill. Everton were concentrating perhaps on defending the direct shot. Galvin had already set off on his run and then drove the ball fiercely across the face of the goal. It just needed it. Hoddle again. Now Brook. Well, trying to get with him, and Gary Brook, who they believe at White Hart Lane is among the best finishers on the staff. Almost showing Everton that quality then. Shooting under pressure, and how close it was. And Burrows can push forward again. Ainscoe. Or Sheedy. Has held that position wide on the left and did better this time. And can attack Perriman perhaps here and Miller and Sharp. Tess Clements out, Kings in on the rebound. And Graham Sharp reminds Tottenham of his shooting power. He fired one past Ray Clements last year and he stung the fingers of the England goalkeeper again there. And Andy King was in to try and make something of the rebound. And Hewton had pilfered an extra yard and is punished by the throw being given to Everton. Taken quickly by Ainscoe. Driven in by Burrows. And how spectacular that would have been from Andy King. Even he appreciated the exhilaration of the moment as he swung into the volley and it sped past the junction with Clements Beaton. Sharp now brought down by Lacey. Now, what will the referee's reaction be here? The referee's judgment is called into question as to whether that incident was when there was a probable threat to a goal. Lacey came across, brought down Sharp, and John Lacey is sent off, judged by referee Don Shaw as having committed a professional foul. Hoddle. Galvin. Has done well for Tottenham in this game against the odds. Now, did Bailey bring him down? And if so, was that a potential goal-scoring opportunity? John Bailey, of course, has already been cautioned. And I do believe John Bailey has been sent off as well. Galvin had got past Higgins. He was looking to bear in on goal himself. And there, Bailey brought him down. Here's Burrows. And here's Kick. Burrows again. Sharp collecting just onside. 
Lorenzko. Well, I don't think he was quite aware that the chance was going to be as easy as it turned out to be. He was stretching for the initial cross, which was played in there by Shah. Ainsko was already committed and then had to try and readjust as it came off Clements. So four goals, plenty of chances made, two players sent off by referee Don Shaw of Cheshire. He said afterwards that John Bailey went because of two bookable offences, John Lacey of Tottenham because of dangerous play. Uh, the Spurs manager Keith Birkinshaw felt slightly aggrieved. I was a little bit surprised because I felt that he was genuinely going for the ball um, and he hadn't committed many fouls in the game and let's face it, the game hadn't been a, a dirty game. But it's how the referee sees it and you've got to accept it. Um, it's not for me to say whether he should or he shouldn't. It's up to the referee to interpret the thing and, and, uh, and then give his decision. What I would say is that uh, we've played three games now this season and every one of them's uh, been terrific games to watch and that's what I'm pleased about. And Keith Birkinshaw's right, it was a fine game to watch.